Does karma have anything to do with getting into accidents? And what about the feeling of not loving your kids? And also the topic of toxic parents. Is this all connected to karma? That's what I'm going to talk about in today's video, so keep watching. So exactly a month and one day ago, I had a big bike accident. I was going down the hill really, really fast in this small town in Switzerland where I live. And I was so happy, I was flying high, and I was quite ungrounded to be honest. And that's when I got my karma. I had a horrible bike accident. I lost control of my bike, I fell. I broke my collarbone, you can't see here, but it was really bad. The bone was sticking out, not from the skin, but under the skin, and I also broke my wrist. I had surgery right away, and luckily I'm recovering very, very well. I really, really, truly believe that it was my karma to have this accident. Actually, I believe that it was my karma to either die that day or at least lose an arm or a limb that day. I wasn't wearing a helmet when I was riding my bike and this mistake I'll never ever do again. And please, if you're watching this and you ride bikes, don't ride a bike without a helmet. But anyway, I was really saved by the grace of God and uh, didn't have any lasting damage. And another reason that this accident happened is because on that particular day, my state was very high. I was very positive. I've struggled with depression most of my adult life. It comes and goes at least once a year. It hits me. It has to do with the time of the year, seasons, seasonal affective disorder and all of that. But on this particular day, I was just so positive. According to the book by Peter Grunwald, I body. I talk about this all the time. I'll link to it below. According to this book, any state of mind you're in during an accident, the shock of the event will lock this emotional state into your physical body and being, also in your emotional being. So if you're anxious, nervous, and scared when you get into an accident, you're going to stay stuck in those feelings for many, many, many days, months, even years to come. For me, I was unlikely, but I was in a very positive state. So that state really got locked into me, shocked into me because of that accident. This again is a huge, huge, huge blessing. I believe that it's because of that I'm recovering so fast and I'm in general in a much more positive state of mind than I usually am. My karma was to die that day, but I was saved. It has to do with my spiritual practice, which is Atma Kriya Yoga. And I'm also a follower of my guru, Paramahamsa Vishwananda. I really, truly believe it was his help, a little extra help to make this karmic unburdening a little bit lighter on me. Instead of losing the whole arm, I just broke my collarbone and wrist and had to go through surgery. Instead of being in the hospital for two, three, four, five weeks, which would traumatize my two young children when mom is away for so long, that's what all family constellation theory talks about, is that early separation between mother and child can have lasting negative consequences on someone's life. Instead of being away at the hospital that long, I was only away for two nights and I could be back home again and be in their presence again and give them that comfort that it's okay, mom is still around, you're safe, you're okay. Now the second topic, not loving your kids. If there's anybody watching who has ever had this thought cross their mind that I really don't love my kid, in fact, I hate him or I hate her right now, Take a deep breath. This is a very taboo subject. You're not supposed to ever say you don't love your kids. And even more taboo is that you're never supposed to say you don't love your mother and you're never grateful for your mother. But anyway, this thought passed through my mind recently and not for any particular reason, for very trivial reasons. It's not that my kids were acting out or whatever, but I really had this feeling that I don't love my kids. And I shared this with my husband. Yes, it's a taboo topic. And of course, anybody that I may have shared this with gave me that reaction that, oh, you shouldn't be saying that. You're the mother. You're supposed to love them unconditionally. 
But you know what? Here I'll also share something that my guru said and not just once or twice, at least 10 times. You can look up his YouTube videos about um, when he gives satsang, when he answers questions. And he talks about this also that he says, ah, you stupid people, you think you love your kids. You think you love your parents, but you don't. This love that you have for them is conditional. It is not unconditional love. As a mom, as a daughter, I never really believed him. But again, karma has a way of humbling you. And it put me in the position to really experience that, that I don't, in fact, love my kids sometimes. So when through divine coincidence, the book Mothers Who Can't Love by Suzanne Forward, PhD, crossed my way, I immediately noticed Mothers Who Can't Love. And I was like, whoa, that sounds a bit like me. Let's find out what's going on. And now I'm reading this book. I'm really, really hooked on it. It talks about growing up with a mother who is somehow blocked from loving you and not only that but who has hurt you deliberately or unknowingly unconsciously in detrimental ways and you are carrying on the burden of that um, forward in your life and not only that you're carrying that legacy means that you've picked up on much of that pain and much of that behavior and you're at the risk of passing it forward so i I'm holding on to this book. I'm reading it as, as quickly as I can. I can't put it down. I'm obsessed. But there's one line from this that really stood out to me that I want to share with you. In the book, Susan says that often it's the fathers that get blamed. Often it's the fathers that are put in the position of hurting or damaging the child. But the mother isn't because, again, it's taboo societally, religiously, even, even in the Bible it says honor thy parents and so on. It's completely taboo to talk about the fact that maybe your mother didn't love you and you should look towards her for the root of some of your pain in your life. This is what she says in the book. A healthy woman wouldn't consciously marry an unhealthy man and stay in an unstable relationship with an unhealthy man. That means if you think that your dad has caused problems in your life and he's the bad one, consider this. What if your mother is also a bad one because otherwise would she have married the bad man? What if the parent that we've been scapegoating all our problems on, even blaming him for hurting our mothers and ruining her life, what if he's not the only bad one? What if your mother also has enormous problems that are under the surface and that have affected you deeply, but you love her and out of love and out of the need for attachment you have completely buried those instincts that something might not have been right in your childhood from your mother bringing this back to karma is this karmic yes it is we all have history we all have a long karmic history with all the members in our family in our friend circle in our neighborhood and this is a really enmeshed situation where absolutely there's karma. What to do about this situation? Well, the first thing, according to the book that I'm reading, is to believe and have faith that no matter what you've been through in your childhood or in your past, there is hope. There is healing available for you and it will happen. I am believing that for myself and just stumbling upon this book is a sign because I finally admitted to myself that I don't love my kids sometimes and then this book lands in my lap and I'm reading it and it's teaching me how to get to a state of loving my kids no matter what, how to get to a state of 
a bit closer to that unconditional love. If this video has helped you, please give it a like and put a comment below because it helps it to reach others who might need to see this message right now. Also, if you've ever had this feeling that you don't love your kids, even though it's a taboo topic, even though it's not socially acceptable to talk about this, if you're brave enough, put it in the comment because I want you to know that you're not alone. You'll see others who'll also open up about this like I have and you'll understand that you're not a bad person for having these thoughts. It's natural, it's normal, and it's an opportunity to actually find that place of love for your children, for your family even more. And finally, I'm curious to know, do you have this inkling that the parent that you were idolizing might actually also have been a bad one, whoever that is in your family? If you've also had this inkling, please put it in the comments. I'd like to engage in a conversation with you about this because this is a topic that I'm still figuring out. And I think it's only through talking about it with others who've who share this experience that we can come to a better understanding of this. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. And finally, check out my blog, thelifester.com, and sign up for my newsletter. On the newsletter, I talk about things I don't share anywhere else, for example, my accident, also some other personal stuff. So sign up on the newsletter, and I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.